Ever young. Slim thick, so extremely small waist, but also has large curves. She has it all, which is essentially unattainable. Not dominant in social settings, more submissive, but I think more and more women are starting to challenge that. TikTokers, Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Ray, and others. I mean, that's how I think of it also. Do I think all teenage girls are like that? No. But I think that society pushes when they that think, when they right? think of American teens, Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Rae come up immediately. Skinny, some curves, clear skin, fair or tan skin. First off, gender is such a construct. And like even using the word girl is just like it already has some type of connotation on it. An ideal girl is an ideal person, an ideal person who is equal to anyone else. So I feel like the ideal American teenage girl is someone who is skinny, probably white. An American teenage girl. Doesn't matter what they look like or who they are. I feel like it's like less on like the physical appearance. Blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, probably really skinny, has a very symmetrical face. Probably be a little goofy, but also very like feminine, able to carry themselves gracefully. Average height, so like five, six. I would say brown hair and blue eyes, that seems to be a common one a lot. Bigger on the bottom rather than the top. Someone who doesn't really conform to the standards that women have to face. People grow up with this idea that you have to be skinny, you have to be tall, you have to have clear skin, you have to have light hair, light skin. But I think as time goes on, it develops into if you're comfortable in your own skin, you become more beautiful, and I think that's what the ideal teenage American girl is. I didn't really ask myself. I don't think I ever asked myself that. I don't really recall like a specific time. I've never done that. I never really think about myself being beautiful. That just never ever crosses my mind. I definitely have. I think probably the first time was around middle school. When I went into middle school, because everyone's changing then, everyone looks different and starts to grow into themselves. And that was definitely a time where I questioned if I was supposed to look the way I looked. Around middle school, when we used to take like this big like team photos, like everyone, and like people were always looking at you. Middle school is also a time of emotional development. And obviously like puberty too. <laughs> Sixth grade was the first time I ever wore makeup to a, like a picture for school. The end of fifth grade and the beginning of sixth grade. I would start to notice the way that my body looked in pictures. Automatic internal comparison that I started to have. I don't look beautiful or I don't look like the girls that I'm seeing when I walk into the mall and I see the Victoria's Secret models. Upper middle school, like seventh or eighth grade, when people started to care about looks. When I was really little. Seven? Eight? Like, I remember looking at myself when I was three years old, being like, I hope I'm pretty when I'm older. <laughs> From very, very young ages, you question whether or not you're beautiful, and you look for male validation, and you look for validation from anyone. You want everyone to think you're pretty. I'll wear something different if I go to a family event than I normally would, and still I'll get a lot of criticism from my grandparents about the way that I look. <laughs> Lots of snide comments. I'm not moving enough, I'm not exercising enough. The clothes that I'm wearing don't look good on me. 
because, you know, my body form doesn't fit it. Oh, you are not as skinny as you should be. Oh, you have a lot of acne. Oh, your smile is not the way that an ideal man would like. No man would like to marry someone who doesn't carry themselves gracefully. My uncles too, like they're always like, oh, let's see what Lila's doing with her face now. The small comments like, my aunts will be like, well, my kids think you look pretty without it. Definitely when I go back to China, like I'll go back during the summer and then I'll literally be like this tone. They'll think of me as like so, so dark. Everyone wants to be white there. It's just like a sign of like, wealthiness and like a sign of beauty in general people with darker skin are just not seen as as beautiful it's the lack of representation because like even with representation of african americans and black americans in media and in hollywood it's generally of lighter skinned people back in the day there was this like divine you, you're given your power from God. And I think that people thought if they were like fair skin, they're somehow more divine, somehow more angelic because you're like brighter. So in India, uh, there are beauty standards that are at a higher level than they are here. Colorism is a really big thing in India. Going to India, I would almost always see like fair and lovely cream ads. The ad is always the same. It's like on the bottle, a before and then like a spectrum and then after. And the first one's like really dark with like tons of spots. And then the other one's like lighter like clear, like blemish free. And it's insane how people will judge you for the color of your skin. People will like try to figure out what status you are in life by the color of your skin. Part of the reason was because of white supremacy and British colonialism, because that really factored into our standard of what we think is superior. I definitely see pretty like Asian girls think like, oh, like, oh my gosh, I wish I looked like that. Being uncomfortable in my ethnic features made me like want to cover it up. That's how I was when I was younger too. Like I wanted to fix it. I wanted to be blonde so bad when I was little, I would literally cry. I just wanted to be white. And I know I'm like white passing, I have light skin, but I still have these ethnic features. We see white people changing their face to look more like us, but then we, still are looked down upon for having these features. I wouldn't say I fit the Eurocentric beauty standard, but I don't understand why that can't mean I'm beautiful. I was taught so young that like being yourself sometimes needs to be changed in order to fit the standard of beauty that you're trying to achieve. No. We are religionless. Yes, we, we do not. We just don't think about it. <laughs> I'm an atheist. I haven't had like any restrictions from like religious figures in my life so I guess I've been able to express myself a little bit more. I define myself as agnostic which is like not believing in set um, religion or God. It's like more of like the universe <laughs> energy. It hasn't ever affected me. I'm agnostic depending on how you were raised and what opinions you hear and what you don't and what you know your parents tell you that's how you kind of grow your definition of beauty. I wouldn't say I'm so much religious as spiritual because I don't really conform to a religion. I don't feel any pull. If someone wants to dress the way they dress or put on the makeup they want to wear, I feel like that's fine. And if that's what makes them feel beautiful, then I feel that they're beautiful themselves. The big thing in Hinduism is that there isn't really an emphasis on how you look, breaking out of the cycle of life and death. To renounce that such a cycle, you need to renounce like material things. Along with those material thing comes this idea of like how you look. Graceful, very soft-spoken, not really speaking what she feels, like sitting back and just being like, mm-hmm, okay, like a pretty face, cooks, cleans. The stereotype of what a woman quote unquote should be. I'm more moderate, which is kind of frowned upon in some ways, just because you're like not fitting either spectrum. I wish it was different. I wish it was more like more accepting of moderates. You can wear what you want and you won't be like shamed for it. I'm a Christian and because God has taken the time to individually shape and create every single human being and he's endowed us with his image, we therefore are all beautiful because we're reflecting him. Christianity also again has a focus on your internal characteristics. We're supposed to work on our character and molding ourselves to be more like God. And so in that way, the Christian definition of beauty is far more internal. And in that sense, it's more everlasting because it's a reflection of your soul. Being a Christian, like, you know, you're taught that everyone's made of God's image and likeness and that like your heart is what really makes you you and like your soul is what really makes you you. So I think understanding that definitely allows you to have a more clear 
uh, view of what beauty really means instead of a more like society based, like skewed view of beauty. A pretty privilege is real. I mean, it's scientifically proven that like you're nicer to people you think are more beautiful. I feel like there is a lot of pretty privilege, which is what a lot of the media calls it nowadays. If you're pretty, you get privilege in some sort of way. So if you're trying to make friends, people will most likely come to you more. People admire you more. People might just feel a lot more comfortable and feel like they should look up to you more if you're more pretty. Pretty privilege is a thing. Even if you think about biology in that kind of sense, it's like with birds, right? They want to mate with the more attractive male, the one with the better genes, right? These people that are deemed more attractive generally have those traits that biologically we gravitate towards, and that's why they are more attractive. It may not even be gravitating in a reproductive way, but it could also just be like, just subconsciously we're doing that, right? I don't think it's con you're consciously being like, oh, they're more attractive, that's why I'm gonna choose them. No, you're just like, oh, I like them better, because they look better, but you're not thinking, oh, they look better, that's why I like They're them better. They're pleasing to you. You can get away with a lot more if you're attractive. That's just, it's, it's a no-brainer. That's just how it is. It's unfortunate that that's how it is. But if you had two people with the same qualifications applying for a job, they're going to choose the more attractive person. It's very prevalent. Like, if you look around, the prettier people are hired all the time. Somehow we've grown as a culture to seem to think that the prettier you are, the smarter and better you are. No one can really control how they look. And the unfortunate byproduct of our society is that sometimes people are judged by that. It's a lot easier to have confidence when you're considered like conventionally attractive. It's very impactful and very important to people. I think a lot of people either believe that someone got to where they are because of how they look or they do get to where they are because of how they look. I think a lot of people struggle with not getting where they want to be because of how they look. And I think that's a big problem. We're constantly on social media. And so every day we're receiving a feed where the ideal body um, is being put forward to us. I don't think that like Instagram or TikTok has helped, especially because within 15 seconds you're consuming this potentially toxic image to you and you're not even registering it because you're just mindlessly scrolling. Society expects people to wear makeup. Society expects people to look a lot more thinner, which affects my self-esteem and if affects people and makes them more conscious about themselves. But growing up in the Midwest, I thought I had to look a certain way because these other girls looked this way. No one else looked the way I did. The white girl is always the one that gets picked in certain situations. In popularity contests, boys, especially in middle school, seem to like them more. And I just like, it, it really made me hate myself. I wanted to change and I wanted to be different. Inner beauty is what got me to this point. For a while, I was like, have to wear this because this is what everyone else is wearing and I have to have this face shape and I have to be this weight. Over quarantine, I actually started like saying affirmations to myself. Like I would look in the mirror while I was doing my makeup and I'd be like, you're so pretty. Like everyone likes you, everyone wants to be you and you're beautiful and you're irresistible. That's what I would say a lot. Maybe you may not believe it at first, but the more you say it, the more you believe it. And I feel like just loving myself, learning how to love myself really got me to a point where no one can tell me anything. For pretty much up until quarantine, I felt I definitely needed to look a certain way because social media was telling me that that's how I should look. My mom was telling me that that's how I should look. So I believe that this is the way that I should look. And then after quarantine, I sort of just grew into what I wanted to look like. And I think that it's better because I feel more comfortable with how I look and who I am. I don't feel like I have to look a certain way. I think my sister really helps me in that. She was always kind of like my mother figure as a child. And she, like, she is gay. Like, goes by she, her, you know, like, is a woman, identifies as a woman, but, like, has always pushed that boundary. The night she, like, caught me, like, shaving my legs, she gave me a whole speech about how it's only society telling you to do this, and it's only men telling you to do this. No, I've always been, like, myself. I'm not that easily influenced, and it's more of, like, me as, like, 
just wanting to change because I get bored of something. It's more on my own personal agenda. A lot of people know that I did cheer and volleyball and cheerleaders are definitely have that like bronze, short, like muscular body that they're supposed to have and volleyball players of course get a lot of comments about their bottom half and how that looks and how it's supposed to look and if someone finds out you play volleyball one of the first questions I get asked is if I um, have a bigger butt than most people <laughs> which is kind of an uncomfortable question to have to answer. A lot of people have assumptions about how I should look because of the sport I play and a lot of people get disappointed when I don't have that certain body type or maybe they think I do and they, my friend doesn't and they're like, well, why doesn't she look the same way? Cheerleading is about being like beautiful. Like that's what it's about. And seeing it only be this type of girl over and over again really played into who I was. If you're a runner, that people expect you to have like really muscly legs and like really like toned abs. There is an ideal runner's body, especially for cross country. There's this idea that you need to be stick thin in order to run. The thing I am most insecure about is my body, because it makes me feel smaller than others expected than others. For example, a backhand volley shorter than many girls. I also feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than many girls. I feel like I am more short than like accept themselves. Great, I think people should definitely love the way they look and if they don't completely love the way they look they should be okay with maybe changing how they look. I support it definitely because like no one's expected to look a certain way like we're all born different like it's like ridiculous if they ask us to be like five nine in like a Victoria's Secret model. <laughs> With the whole Airy Real campaign I remember looking <laughs> I had a picture of her and thinking, really? Like, wow. She looks like she looks like my friends. She looks more like me. Loving it. I wish I could take part in it more, but I love it. We're noticing what's wrong and we're trying to do something about it for, you know, the first time in who knows how long. <laughs> I've noticed people changing a bit more and like a lot of my friends that used to be super concerned about how they looked, they're turning into people that are like, ah, no, screw it, I don't care. It takes a little while for some people to reach that change, but it's, it's getting there, and I think we just gotta keep going slow and steady. Really late. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I mean, this idea that you have to be one size to be beautiful is so ridiculous. Like, everyone's pretty, like, come on. Like, also, why do people care what other people weigh? Like, if you wanna be more active, athletic as long as people are healthy and they're not hurting themselves i don't really see the problem the new body positivity movement sometimes pushes an unhealthy way of life i think that the body positivity movement should be encouraging people to be healthy not to look a certain way or not to be okay with how they look but to strive to be healthy because a lot of what's being accepted with the body positivity movement are ways of life that are just not very healthy. I have no problem with it. Honestly, I would support it, but you can't support things that will put your health at risk. You you should fit what your genetics intended you to fit. I think that it's really great. As much of the backlash that it does get for sometimes like people not liking it, people thinking that like, well, fat is always unhealthy. I think that it's quite the opposite. Like sometimes fat can be unhealthy, but Sometimes people have outstanding medical conditions, sometimes skinny is not as healthy. The idea that fat is not healthy, and that's a lot of people's arguments, is really not fair. Someone could have an issue with losing weight, they could have an issue with gaining weight, but they'll see a skinny person and be like, oh, they're so healthy. I feel like it's good to a point. Like, I feel like if you have a large platform, I feel like you shouldn't really like do it so drastically because there's like young girls as like your audiences and stuff 
and I feel like that's just setting like an unrealistic beauty standard. I think that it's bad for people who don't understand what they really are and how like often they're actually used because it makes them feel like this is actually the way that they look. They actually look perfect all the time. They actually are this perfect standard of beauty when in reality, everyone's different. They don't all look like supermodels who work for Victoria's Secret, you know? But I do think if your audience kind of understands that and like you're open that, okay, I do use Photoshop, like it's not bad. Some people don't portray themselves like it's the reality. Like this is kind of my art form. I put myself to do photography. And I think there's nothing wrong with like editing and Photoshopping and doing filters as long as you're not like portraying it as natural and real and like my everyday life. I think Photoshop is so cool. I wish I knew how to do it. Filters, they can be really bad at times because if that's the only way people are satisfied with themselves and looking at themselves, it can just be a bad way to live because it's not always gonna, you're not always gonna have a filter on, sadly. I think it's fun to like look different. Filters, I think are just fun. Photoshop, you know, Mm. I, I feel like being fake is the thing that's taking down the whole body positivity movement. When I see girls or women use Photoshop because they're altering their body, it just feels like they're conforming society wants them to look like. So because of that, or when you use a filter to like make your face skinnier or more slender, um, I would argue that rather than relying on the use of technology, you should focus on finding contentment with the body that you have been given. I don't particularly like them. I don't use them per se, but I know a lot of people, if they feel un uncomfortable or they don't like the way that they look in a certain photo, they change it. There's a lot of stars who will, you know, change or alter their face in a photo or change their body. And that's definitely damaging to people like me and people like teenagers who see that and think that they actually look like that. And then they're feeling insecure because they don't look like that. Whereas the person in the photo doesn't even look like that. And I think it's wrong, to be honest. So where you have people using like filters and like editing, like Photoshop, Facetune, all of that, like being able to change how you look and present this whole new version of yourself on social media is really damaging for people who are gonna see that. In the UK, I think there was a bill where if you're gonna put a filter on your photo, you have to say that you used a filter or that you Photoshopped it. And I think that's important because very few people actually look like how they look on Instagram, right? Very few people, if any. Instagram itself is never gonna be like a space to look at if someone, what they really look like, because there's angles, there's like filters. I mean, like I put cool filters on it, but I'm, I don't have access to Photoshop. If I did, I probably would have used it so much because of like the pressure. Like when you see other people doing it, like fashion models, you want to do it yourself. And then it just, it trickles down. It makes a whole spiral. You can't make yourself look unrealistic. Like if it's artful, I think it's fine. Doing things to change your features so drastically that you don't look like yourself is just a little too much. And I think that just pushes a false narrative. If it makes you feel good about yourself, then I, I don't see the problem with that. I don't think it's the fault of the celebrity if they put out pictures that are unrealistic because it's their job to look that good. I use makeup, I think it's fun. I do it, you know, I used to do it again for others, but I, I, I really like it now. I think it's a way to like express myself and such and like match the seasons. For me personally, I wear mascara and I wear foundation, but that's really about it. I like the way I look generally. I don't feel the need to change myself, but if someone felt the need to, I think that should be allowed and it shouldn't be criticized. This idea that makeup is to make you look prettier or to because you're insecure, people wear makeup. That, that's something that's ingrained in everyone's minds really heavily. Once we as a community or society move past that, it, it will make it easier on young girls. When I first started wearing makeup, I was kind of young. I was only like fifth grade. And up until like mid of sophomore year, I kind of was just doing it to fix what I thought was wrong. I've found what I think I look beautiful in. So like purple eyeshadow. I mean, I do this big makeup. I still think I'm pretty without it. But with it, it's like a character, it's drag. That's what I like to call it, because I like drag queens a lot. So this is my drag. I don't wear a lot of makeup just because I don't find it necessary. It's important that when you do wear makeup, you don't become too dependent and fully reliant on it. Just being aware of you, like if I'm wearing makeup, am I wearing it because I want to? 
Or am I wearing it because I feel like I have to to fit in? It's definitely society, society takes a ton of in factors, general, is that fault? Little to social models social media, our own skewed mindset. Men, <laughs> men, just in general, all the things they've constructed on so many people, on races, genders, somatic things. I think they're to blame for a lot of things, and I think they need to sit down for a little bit and, and realize how they can completely revolutionize themselves. Men, you go back to a time where men were the only ones in power, like they only respected women who they found attractive. And so I think that the push to be beautiful was impacted by how you were treated by men. The generation before us, there was a time period where everybody was trying to defy the norms, feminism, with cool, great. They took it a step too far, and with that came, you know, this is what girls are supposed to look like, this is what guys are supposed to look like. And anybody who didn't confine to that, bye. There are some people in our generation that was like, hey, that's not okay, just be whatever you want. Who we put in places of power and we put at high pedestals. The people like the supermodels, the famous singers, people like that. That's who I think creates the standard. It's just up to whether or not people are open enough to change their minds about what they think. The media, celebrities and how they're like, oh, now I'm going to change myself to fit what society wants me to fit before they were creating the standard, but now they're conforming to the standard. We'll look at magazines or we'll watch different shows and be like, oh wow, like she's so skinny, she's so pretty. She has a boyfriend and she's so skinny, but the other one who's a little bit more fat doesn't have a boyfriend. Society is a byproduct of humanity, but humanity is also a byproduct of society. So we create all of these rules that we live by, but then we also force ourselves to follow these rules. We as humanity have created them. So it should be equally as easy to dismantle them. And every single civilization, like whether it be ancient or like current civilizations, there's always going to be some level of standard that everyone needs to meet physically. As we've progressed as a society, I think that little standard has become less physical and a little bit more emotional. And I think we're understanding as a society that beauty is also diverse. I don't think people fully understand it. I think that's something that everyone's trying to study and figure out because how can we make progress in this area instead of continuing to take steps back? Honestly, no, because I think everyone has their own opinions. Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think that's a thing. I think beauty is subjective. I think it is subjective to everyone. The earth, animals, animals are always beautiful. Um, Cats, <laughs> the color purple. Nature, because nature is like, colorful and it's like nice to look at, it's peaceful. Scenes that strike awe in like all individuals. Certain like moments in nature, sunrise on a mountain or seeing a waterfall and like just feeling the rush of the water and feeling it shake the earth. God, when you or I, or we witness someone doing like an action out of love, to someone else that is also objectively beautiful. I think internally, if you're a good person, I feel like that is very beautiful. Kind to people and you are very empathetic. You're a good person if you, if you have a nice balance of, you know, doing what's healthy for yourself, but also caring for others, that is beautiful. If you recognize privilege, etc. Vibrancy, being vibrant and being, being loud and proud. how I was treated, how they treat other people as well. Definitely internally. So emotion, how you treat people in your surroundings, how you treat um, yourself, and how you look at the world. How kind someone is, how they are able to give back to their community, how they are able to treat other people. Personality. You have to think about the way someone else makes you feel in any sort of relationship, whether it be friendship, a romantic relationship. It makes you feel and how it makes other people feel and if you feel good about it and it makes you feel good and maybe it makes other people feel good, then that would be beautiful. A lot of things that you can't actually see are still beautiful. Love is beautiful, friendship is beautiful, and those aren't tangible things. Beauty is something that is an inward reflection of the characteristics of your soul. Big shocks of things. Being loud is beautiful. I think when you're confident and when you do things with a purpose, that's beautiful.